right, uh, I think we are ready to start the meeting of the uh, Montpelier Roxbury uh, School Board of Directors, uh, the Board of School Directors, um, starting at 6.37. Uh, first, uh, one addition to our agenda, we need to appoint a chair for our evaluation committee. Um, and uh, <coughs> we can go to the first order of business, which is public comment. <coughs> Hearing none, we can go to the second order of business, which is the consent agenda. I do have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda approved. <coughs> um, now on to Hope and Eve for the learning focus. All right, so starting off with student celebrations, all of these kind of meld together. It's hard to like really categorize them, but um, our first student celebration is that the conversation, which is a student-led group that talks about sexual assault and issues surrounding consent um, and holds con like actual physical conversations about those issues in, during Solon Block, once a month and has done so for the past few years, went into ninth grade classes recently and had community members and professionals present on consent and what that means. And it works in tandem with what they've learned in health and sort of builds on that um, so that they understand a really important issue. Um, yeah, um, so we had a slam poet, Stephen Willis, come in to the high school and a lot of English classes went and some people in free blocks, but he basically was this poet who talked a lot about race and um, issues of identity and it inspired a lot of people to see how um, poetry and literature can inspire and how you can really showcase who you are through it and I think it would be great to have more people come to the school and guest speakers to do more motivation for students to see the possibilities and um, dual enrollment has been going really well their semester courses have an earlier end date than the schools here so a lot of people have been excelling and taking advantage of that opportunity and student council has been tasked with helping the league of women voters register students to vote so there's going to be a voter registration drive next week, and I'll be registering, and I'm excited. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, student council members will also be helping advertise that and make sure that students have what they know what they need to bring in and have the information they need to register. Uh, moving on to student concerns and needs. Um, just mentioning the continued efforts to support diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I always just reiterate that with every presentation, even if there isn't something specific um, to bring up about that, just because I think it's so important. And Club Action has been working on something called peer tutoring, and they're having a Solon Block tomorrow to discuss and present to potential peer tutors who are interested. And so it would be students who are um, have taken courses that other students need help with and basically like helping build a sense of community and um, making sure that students can help and support each other if they're struggling in certain subjects and just also get the gratification of like helping other students succeed and that we th that ties into the achievement gap of course um, because if students aren't getting what they need out of um, their experiences in the classroom that sometimes extra help is necessary and I think that this is one of the ways to sort of ameliorate what might be I, I wouldn't say um, lacking in the classroom but what they might still be missing out on um, that would require that need of extra help and in terms of student perspective a lot of MHS students who are involved in Earth Group are also involved in Youth Lobby which is a climate action group that um, that has members from Harwood and U32 and has expanded to schools such as Essex and Burlington in the past and so they're holding this big um, sort of like first day in the legislature where they are going to be co-hosting Coffee with Constituents with David Zuckerman and hosting a press conference 
and delivering <coughs> the United, um, I think it's called the Young Vermonters United Climate Declaration to various committees and also testifying in committee to certain um, legislators. And so that's just entirely around climate justice and ways to move forward in the legislative session this year. Yeah, so this is our final um, marking period with summative. So we have retake week approaching quick and that's going to have midterms and a lot of students are prepping for that. And I think it's just a good opportunity to take advantage of improving your grades and just working towards getting better academic scores. That's Thank you. Um, question on voting. Can you, I should probably know this, but <laughs> can you register prior to turning 18 if you're going to be 18 or something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the poet was amazing. He was I wasn't so here good. yesterday. I was at a workshop, so I missed it, but I heard he was just like, knock it out of the park. Yeah, everyone Wonderful. loved him. It's like people who normally wouldn't be interested in that type of stuff were like really involved. That's exactly that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was great. He was definitely really engaging. Yeah, and, and funny too. He was yeah, funny. Personable. My. Yeah. My daughter went twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Sue Manami even said that he, she thinks that she overworked him a little bit because his voice was like hoarse at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, on to board business. I think this is probably a good yeah. place to start with um, appointing a chair for evaluations committee. It was formerly Becky, uh, but obviously since Becky has stepped off the board, um, we need a new chair, and Tina has graciously volunteered to do it. Um, so I would suggest someone nominate Tina, unless someone wants to fight her for it. <laughs> <laughs> Go yes, for it. Actually, who do we have on that committee right now? Because Lisa had been on it before. And I think the, it's Jerry. So it's Jerry. And so it's Tina, Jerry. Jerry and we, yeah. we met this week. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I move we appoint Tina Muncy as the chair of the evaluation. Second. I say. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and then uh, we need to appoint, talking about Becky, a uh, replacement. Um, so, Mara, if you want to come up and introduce yourself, uh, he sent an uh, excellent letter of interest. And um, you don't have to say much, you don't have to say much other than uh, hi if you want should to. Should I use the Mike, or you can, can I you just can, talk you can either, awesome. Yeah, talk here, or you can sit if you want. That oh. little, yeah, there's so a, there's a that little the nice is the same. Y'all are fancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Mara Iverson. I use she, her pronouns. I live here in Montpelier. Otherwise, I could not, in fact, be a Montpelier rep on the school board. <laughs> um, and I work for Outright Vermont, which is an LGBTQ youth organization, and we advocate throughout the state of Vermont. And I'm particularly interested in being on the school board here because um, I'm passionately interested about education far and wide. And um, it's kind of the place where kids spend all their waking hours between the ages of like 6 and 18. So that is a place for shaping the citizens that are going to support the country in the future. And that means that it's important for the people on the board to support those efforts, and I'm really excited about that. Good. Thanks. Any questions for Mark? No. Uh, how, ma how many committees do you want to be on? <laughs> <laughs> and what can you stop? <laughs> uh, yeah, Andrew. Well, now, is that a serious question? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have, I was asked this question because I was appointed to an, a vacant seat and I, I think it is, I mean, you're, this is, Mara's the only applicant, correct? Yes. So we don't, it's not like we have, yeah, so okay. it's not like we really have a decision. No, I'm very glad that you applied, so thank you so much. I'm, yes, if we, yeah. I think if we did have we a decision, you would be extremely competitive. Yes, thank yes, you. without a doubt, yeah. <laughs> very, very glad that but you applied, so thank you so much. Do you have, um, obviously there's going to be an election in like two months, mm -hmm. do you have designs on um, plans to run for election mm -hmm. for the school board as well? So, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yeah. And I, can, I was going to do that anyway, and then the <coughs> appointment came open before that, yeah. so. Okay. Yeah, and so just to explain this, because it's totally your choice, the appointment, which I'm going to 
go out on a limb and say will probably occur, um, is good for the remainder of Becky's term, which is to town meeting day. And then there will be an election for, uh, there's three it's of us. It's actually not the remainder not of her remainder. term. She has another year on her term. Exactly, I was gonna say, so there's gonna be three, three full term seats and then the remainder of Becky's term. Mm -hmm. um, Three? Three? Yes. Yeah. Three open? Your seat, me, and Tina. Oh, so but you three, and Tina are rerunning. They're, they're, they're competitive are elections. Gotcha. Yeah, we're rerunning, but people, gotcha. people can run against us. Yes, yes, yes. Because <laughs> it's all one election. Huh? Yeah. Isn't it? It's like. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 so for no more than three, to, right? You had to but, designate? But no. They, but there no, will be. Because they have terms. They have but, terms. Yeah, but then there will be an election for the remainder of Becky's term, which will be, I think, separately listed. Yes. Um, but what we were discussing practically wise, when you put your name on the ballot, do you are you saying, for yes. example, yes. if you're running for that, you, position, are, you, you have to designate, in right? Fact, your exactly. Petition has to say, say that. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, your petition. Has to yeah. Say. Your petition has to yeah. Say. So your petition needs to indicate whether you're running for one year or for three years. Mm -hmm. Yes. So oh, yes. Uh, as far as going, Michelle has indicated that. Can I announce this? Yes. I think we have. Yes. yes. So, so Michelle is very sadly, but probably not so sadly for her, announced <laughs> 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 um, that she's not running. So there will be at least one non-competitive three-year term, and then the remainder of Becky's seat. So um, our appointment does not have. You can run for obviously any of those. Uh, so if you, you know, if. If you say, eh, maybe I'll give it a year and see how I feel, <laughs> uh, you know that you know then you can choose to run for Becky's seat, the remainder of the term we're going to appoint you for. Mm -hmm. um, or if you say, hey, I I really don't want to have to deal with another. I, I know I want to be in this for three years. I don't want to have to, you know, go and get signatures and deal with another election next fall. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, you can run for the three-year term. Just just so you're kind of clear on that. Excellent and, information. Thank you. Yes, and I think the. You need 30 signatures. I'm actually checking with John Odom to see if there's been any change in the process because we used to be part of the city and now we're our own district. Mm. I don't think there is, but I'm checking with John Odom to make sure. And actually the person to check with um, is Tammy Legacy. Okay. It's the person who knows our, us as our a district. district. Our district, yeah. 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 Um, so I'm gonna find out the answer to that question, but the, the process in the past has been uh, <coughs> we need to get 30 signatures by, I think. I think it's 40 days before town meeting. Yeah, so it's It'll usually be in the next 20 days. Yeah. Yes. Before yeah. the end of January. Exactly, yeah. before the end of January. It's usually late January. Does Sherry need to do that too? Yeah, I need yeah. to get, yeah. I talked to Tammy. Okay. Um, like yes. I know the due date, um, Grant indicated the date <coughs> today. It's January 27th that these submissions okay. will be. Okay, that's good to know, because I need to do that as well. Um, and any members of the public who are thinking about running, it's good for them to know as well. Mm -hmm. January 27th. Yep. Get your signatures lined up. Yes. Um, would you like a motion, Spencer? I would like a motion. I think we're ready now for further discussion. I move that the board appoint Laura Iverson mm -hmm. as a Montpelier representative to the school board. I saw Fill the term vacated by Becky Bowen. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Yay. And oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> uh, you are totally welcome to uh, take a seat up here with us until you swear yourself in, which you can do either in person or over the phone with John Odom at City Hall. Um, you're, it's not official and you cannot vote, but we certainly mm -hmm. are happy to have you sit for the rest of the meeting. Do so you want to drag your chair over? Uh, yeah. yeah, I will drag my chair and get my board pack. Yes. And right. then we'll make you a fancy name tag. <laughs> I think you can do it with any notary, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you can. With what's where That's what but, John said. But John, <coughs> he's not going to mess up anything. Yeah. Uh, if you can do it with any notary, we have several of the school instructions. <gasps> yep. Yeah, that's what John said. <laughs> yeah. All right, excellent. Well, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, budget discussion again. Yeah. <coughs> Packed house. <laughs> yeah, so now. Who's that? Packed house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
the yeah, so uh, <laughs> if it's all right with everybody, instead of going through every detail on every slide, since um, it's just us, I'll probably just um, hit the highlights of what's yeah. changed. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, there'll be plenty of time for a discussion. Um, my apologies, I only got the briefing out this morning because I was told our equalized pupil number would be out Thursday afternoon or this morning. And unfortunately, it still hasn't come. So waited for nothing. Um, but there were a lot of other things that changed. So there's really just one uh, unanswered question. So um, unfortunately, all slides are loaded, so I'm going to be kind of skipping through. So here's the important one. Changes since our last presentation. So the common level of appraisal came in um, pretty close in Montpelier. I was off by, um, I had estimated 86.86, or I'm sorry, 87.17, and the actual CLA came in at 86.86. Um, it's pretty close, but it's still <coughs> enough that it, it increased the tax rate by 0.6 cents in Montpelier, just that one change. In Roxbury, way off. Um, I, Roxbury CLA dropped over 5% last year. This year, it actually um, went up. So that was a shock to me. Uh, I guess that means property values did not increase in the community of Roxbury which may not be a good thing for individual homeowners that are trying to sell, but it's great news for taxpayers because it dropped the tax rate 9.6 cents, just wow. the CLA. I think Roxbury is just such a small sample that it, mm -hmm. it can swing individual mm -hmm. sales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's more yeah, volatile. Than, so before yeah. Roxbury was almost a level tax rate, now their tax rate's going down, I think like 9.4 cents, which you'll see later. On the expense side, um, tech center tuition went way up. Um, the number, our six semester average, went up dramatically because two, two semesters dropped off and two new semesters came on. The two that dropped were very low as far as student counts. The two that came on were very high. So we increased like, oh, I think it was over four students in our six semester average. Not to mention um, Central Vermont, Career centers tuition went up fairly dramatically as well. So that was um, a bit of an increase there. Health insurance corrections, if you remember, um, this is actually a correction to a correction because the last time I decreased health insurance looking at the statewide negotiations, but as I reread it, I think I was a little too quick to make that adjustment downward. So I undid that um, because of the timing where you can make adjustments to various bargaining units. Um, so I put that back in and then I think somebody changed from like two person to family or something like that. Um, 504 placements, those are outside placements not for kiddos that are on IEPs. Um, I was able to reduce that. It's based on student needs. We know something more about student needs today than we did last month. Um, internet and phone, I dropped that $18,000. We are down to just one internet phone provider and um, we have now worked it out so that our E-rate discount is being applied to our bills and we have a better idea of what our, our monthly bills are going to be and so that was a, a savings. On the revenue side, we got some numbers from the AOE. Um, the special education block grant was a little bit lower than I anticipated. Um, the special education triple E, which is um, essential early education for pre-K, that was a little higher than I anticipated. The special ed intensive, which is that like 56% or so of our expenses, um, that's a little higher than I had initially um, estimated and our extraordinary is a little higher, probably because it went to 95% reimbursement from 90%. Um, except it went from 50,000 to 60,000 to hit the threshold. But, um, so the net was on the revenue side, we ended up positive. Um, tuition, that's just general ed tuition that we get for kids that are coming here from other districts or towns. Um, I bumped that up a little bit in the hopes that you were going to approve the uh, announced tuition, which you did. Um, and so that is changes for expenses and revenues. 
and the tax factors. The one that we're missing, obviously, is equalized people stuff. Um, district overview slide. This is mostly intended to to put some uh, background information up for town meeting day. We went over the context. I don't need to go over that again. Multi-year plan unknowns. We're down to. As soon as we get equalized pupils, I'll probably just delete this because it, there's no sense in just overly reminding people that dollar yield and non-residential rate have to be set by law and we really know that. So as soon as we get equalized pupils, that slide will go away. Obviously, the, the numbers in this chart are different because the expenses went um, up a little bit, the non-tax revenues went down a little bit. So I I think we were at, in Ed spending, it's 4.68. I think we were at 4.77. So Ed spending is down a little bit. Um, equalized pupils is still the big question mark. If you remember, I did bump it up by about five in my estimate here. I'm hoping that's still good. I'm hoping that's still maybe a little on the conservative side, but um, we should know that any day now. Enrollments went over that last time, and staffing went over that last time. Quick question. Yep. Who's responsible for the equalized pupils? Is that Brad James? Right. Or? Um, Brad James is the one who provides it, yeah. yeah. And, it, and I, I should be, it, in some fairness, our, our FY20 ADM didn't get certified with the AOE until this past weekend. So, had he run the numbers on Friday, we wouldn't have a good number right. either. So I was kind of telling him, wait, 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 and then on Monday, hurry up and do it, hurry up and do it. <laughs> um, so it should be, I'm hoping, tomorrow, but definitely we should have it by next week, which is when you definitely need it in order to approve the budget. Um, the expense detail, you can look at some of the words. I tried to update the, the narrative because something's changed, like career center tuition is a different number, so I changed some of those words. But really, the changes that are reflected in here are the ones I talked about that are the changes from December 18th, so I won't bother hitting the individuals. Nothing through the capital plan is different. Tax rates. So this one is different in a few places. <coughs> so the revenues and expenses are updated. The equalized pupils isn't. I didn't change the dollar yield. As a reminder, that is different than what the tax commissioner had recommended, but it's still up in the air until the legislature finishes their work. Um, the CLA in that box, that's what's been updated since last time. And you can see the blue box at the bottom, what I had estimated before versus what it is now, and the impact of that. So the impact of that different CLA was a 0.6 increase for Montpelier, 9.6 cent decrease for um, Roxbury. I should say for anybody from Roxbury that's listening, this is it. I mean, this is pretty much done. This 1.610 actual tax rate that we are estimating there, it's not going to change. I could decrease the budget by $5 million. It can't go any lower because of statute. I could increase it by, I think the last time I played around with it, I could increase the budget by $850,000, and it still wouldn't change the um, Roxbury tax rate. So that's 1.61 is pretty much done for Roxbury. For Montpelier, of course, that number could change dramatically if that equalized pupil number changes. And to give you some context for that, it's about one penny for every seven equalized pupils. So if instead of 1245, if that's 1252, then that tax rate drops a penny. If I were to try to drop it a penny by doing something with the budget, I would have to reduce $120,000. How much would you have to do? $120,000 is about a penny for Montpelier, and seven equalized pupils is a penny. 
So yeah, that, and that's something you should kind of put in the back of your mind. If you have a target in your mind for a tax rate, once I tell you what's going on with equalized pupils, then you'll know what the impact is going to be, and then you would know what you might want us to do financially to make up the difference. So, Grant, if we had, if the peop, if the pupil count comes in seven higher than what you expected, then that gives a hundred and twenty thousand dollar buffer into the that that, budget. That would have. What it would allow us to do is reduce the tax. We rate. could we could increase our budget by one hundred and twenty thousand dollars if this went up by seven, and the tax rate would stay the same. Right. Or we could leave the budget alone. Yeah. This goes up by seven, and the tax rate drops by, by a penny. Yeah. yeah. And then the residential tax rate impacts. I just refreshed those. It's it's kind of <coughs> interesting how it's. An increase of 9.4 cents in Montpelier, a decrease of 9.4 cents in Roxbury, which is just coincidentally, is, is how it works sometimes. Um, and as this note says, Roxbury is a firm number. Even if our equalized pupils change, it's not going to change Roxbury's tax rate. Right? And the other thing to point out is this: these impacts are based on property value alone. And most people, at least I'd say two thirds of the people, receive income sensitivity adjustments, which lower their impact. I updated this residential tax rate history as well. Um, it still tells the same story. If you look at tax rates without CLA, tax rates have dropped for both communities from FY18 to FY21. Um, in the case of Roxbury, it's even dropped fairly significantly when you factor in CLA, it's almost 9.4 cents lower. <clears throat> and the, the dark blue is Roxbury with, without CLA, the light blue is with CLA. And you can see last year, because the CLA dropped, that line went up, even though the without CLA went down. But this year, since the CLA was stable, or actually went up a little bit, both lines went down. For Montpelier, a minor increase without CLA, it turns into a big increase with CLA. And Andrew had asked for a 10-year history, which I couldn't really do for Roxbury, but I did give it to you for um, Montpelier. The, the one thing you should look at, though, is this number here for Montpelier with, C, with CLA. On the handout that you got for the 10-year history, that number might be a little different because I was tweaking as we went on. Mm -hmm. Non-residential, it is what it is. The budget has no impact to this. Outlook didn't change. Budget summary, I just kind of updated the numbers. It's a 4.68 increase in ed spending, 4.3 in spending per pupil right now. That number could change dramatically if our number of pupils goes up. Um, and then the tax rates in Montpelier right now, it shows a 5.7% increase, which is the 9.4 cents. Roxbury, 5.5 decrease, which is 9.4 cents. And we are really down to, I think we were all pretty comfortable with the budget before, so we're really just down to finding out that equalized pupil count. But if there's anything else, any other questions or changes, um, feel free. The upcoming meetings we have on next Friday, next Wednesday, which we have to approve the budget so we can get the warnings done. Yep. Um, and then March 2nd is the informational hearing here at the high school. Great. Um, questions for Grant, Tina? Um, I had a community member ask what the and, and maybe we really can't do it, what the cost per pupil was for us compared to the surrounding districts and at what's the comparisons to the surrounding districts and the rest of Vermont? We're in the middle. I was looking at it yesterday <coughs> in terms of per pupil spending, where we were last year at least. They just released that before. They've released the 2019 numbers at the end of... And it, it depends a lot on what you're looking at too. I mean, you can't say anything about FY21 because everybody's building them right now. Right. I can tell you that we're at $17,060. $17, the excess spending threshold is $18,756. So
So that's significant. We've got a nice cushion. We have plenty of room before we get penalized for tax rates. If you take that excess spending threshold and figure that maybe the statewide average is maybe 10% below that, um, then that would be like 16,880, which is slightly below our 17,060. But that's just me making a guess um, because 21, we won't know until it's all done. Um, in FY20, there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. You can look at pure statewide average or you can look at it um, by small districts, medium districts, large districts. You can look at it by districts that are unified union school districts like us versus supervisory unions. I think if you looked at FY20 and you looked at union unified union school districts, I would say the statewide average, I believe, was six, just over $16,000 and we were at 16,361. So that I would say is a firm number that you could point to, about $360 over the statewide average last year. And I, I would say though, in general, Andrew's assessment is correct. We're probably in the middle of the pack, pretty close. And there aren't a huge number of union districts, are there? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're getting to be. More and more. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah. For FY19, if you look across the entire state, in terms of our rank of education spending per equalized pupil, and this was just published last month, we were 73. Okay, thank you. Meaning that 72 districts had higher per yeah. pupil and than we did, yeah. Yeah, and a similar number were lower. Cause Districts, yeah. unions, however, they're oh. grouped together. Right. They're like 180 <coughs> or 200 or something all together. There are... Let me see what that was before. Or yeah, 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 there's been a lot of mergers. Yeah, there's been a lot of mergers. I'm looking for the lowest. There's some 160s on here, 162. Might be the highest number. So we're really mm -hmm. smack in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's good to be average. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. 165, it looks like, in this grouping. And of course, you have to also factor in how you look at averages, yeah. too. I mean, if somebody has an extremely high <coughs> number, that could change the number if you're looking at a dollar value as opposed to where we rank. This is just rank, yeah. Which is probably the better way to do it. So probably the biggest change between what you're presenting us now and what we're gonna see next Wednesday is you will likely have this, the equalized people number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, even as, as recently as like one o'clock, um, Brad call, um, emailed me and said he was still hoping to get it out today, but obviously, it that, I mean, unless I haven't felt the vibration on my phone, <laughs> I didn't email him. Um, the legislature would, is in session, that takes yeah. up his time. And that's where he was all morning today. So, um, since he said that, I would assume it's definitely um, a safe bet that we're going to have it by next Wednesday. Okay. Um, and hopefully, in time for me to get out a briefing to you much before the uh, meeting next time because what if we didn't does it doesn't the law require that the ballot states the per pupil spending um it the ballot has to say um, what the per pupil spending is and what the percentage increase is from the prior year so we wouldn't if they don't get it to us we'd probably have to have an emergency board meeting probably i don't think it would get there i mean Right now, we have one, technically, because what uh, they did was they calculated it before they did we provisional. got our FY20 numbers in. So they have a statutory number in there, which is 3.5% 3, 3 lower than last year. We don't want to use that. Right. Um, because Nor it's is like, it accurate. What's that? We've got more kids. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got, got more kids. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we'll have it. I'm, I'm confident we'll have it. But I'm the only thing I'm not comfortable with yet is I want to see what it is too. I don't. I don't want to just have them send it to us. I want to see what it is, mm -hmm. and it should be. If we were at twelve forty last year and we had an increase again this year, twelve forty five really, 
I think is conservative, it yeah. should be at least that. Yeah. And if it's not that, then we're going to have some issues that we have to sort through. And that makes me uncomfortable just because the statewide data system is so clunky that it could take a long time <coughs> to fix. So hopefully we're in good shape, though. I know, as a matter of fact, U32 got a look at our FY20 ADM because they asked me about a couple of kids. And so their, their kiddos finally showed up, <coughs> which they had been hounding me about because they, their equalized pupils were low because we weren't counting their kids that are in our school. It, so I think we're good. These are actual, not equalized, right? Right. That's a head count on October 1st. Right. It's not even ADM. So this looks like we got 15 new kids. And then you have to so. look at what came off from the prior year. Oh, no, wait. 72 to 108 is 36 new kids from last year to this year. And now the, the big question right. is, then you take that and divide by two because it's a two-year average, so that's 18, but then you don't know how the weighting is going to factor that. But I would hope that we're in, in good shape. Yeah. And some kids are more kids than others. Yeah. Right. We've got a lot of 10th graders. <laughs> it's a good thing. 10th so graders are very weighted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with our current numbers, though, what we're looking at giving to voters is a 5.7% increase in the budget with a 9.4% increase and I feel like we're gonna have to really justify that to voters. I've I've told Jim I'm really I mentioned this to Bridget too, I'm really anxious because our municipality is struggling with health insurance costs and I've been told by some city council members that they're looking at some steep increases on the municipal side and I don't think it's fair but it's I think that will affect us. And so I think that's something for us all to be cognizant of heading into this. And I think that when we brief this budget, I think we should try to put it into terms of spending per pupil. Because really, it's just your total expense budget, that's not really fair. Because there's districts out there that lost 100 kids, and their budget's only going up 4%. Well, we gained a bunch of kids, and our budget's going up 5%. That, that's apples and oranges. It's really, it should be, how are you looking per pupil? Because then their, their per pupil number is going way up higher, and ours is staying pretty stable. And right now we're at 4.27. I'd still like that number to be around four. So I'm hoping for an equalized pupil count that's a little higher, which will drop that percentage down. And, that, and I think that's the number we should be trying to tell people about and educate I, them. I really think it will drop based on the our actual yeah. yeah. The, the other the other story and I I think Libby was on this email but I responded to Jim when we got these yesterday. I just took a quick look. And if you look at FY15 to FY21, although the change from FY20 to FY21 um, right now we're looking at it potentially being 5.4%, obviously subject to change. But say that that stays, if you look at FY15 to FY21, the change over that period is closer to 10.5%. And if you look at total, total. And if you look at, um, if you in look a at- In tax an, rate or in ed spending? In, in actually, they're pretty similar, both um, the tax rate and per pupil spending, which makes sense because they're, they're linked. Um, but if you also look at uh, inflation over that same period, you're looking at about a 10% increase to um, the overall cost of goods and services that people pay for every day. So when you contextualize the cost of our public schools going up at roughly the same percentage as the cost of most other things we're paying for over the same time period, and in fact, if, if, you, if we went back a year prior, it would, the cost of our public schools in Montpelier would actually be less than uh, inflation. Um, I think it really helps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we have a few good stories to tell. I, mean, I think one, it's, yeah, start with this is a very solid budget, and it's based on the needs of our kids, um, and that it serves the needs of our kids, and there's nothing in here that's extravagant or not well thought out. Um, and uh, in fact, if anything, you know, I think there could be an argument that we need more robust spending, and this is pretty constrained. Um, you know, very responsibly so, but um, this is not, they didn't go all Cadillac on all things. But uh, our taxes go up, 
taxes. Well, you know, you know um, the taxes and other things do go up over time. But I, I think, um, you know, noting that, that, you know, as Andrew said, that overall in line, this is roughly been in the rate of inflation. Um, we did have a few years where, uh, you know, we had pretty light to no tax increases. Um, in fact, 18, 19 reductions. are reductions. Are reductions. Uh, yeah, and then 17 was, was very modest. Uh, and 16 was, was not particularly substantial. Even last year wasn't particularly substantial. Uh, these numbers may get better when we get the equalized pupil. Uh, and also, you know, the fact that Montpelier has a robust housing market um, that, you know, led to a CLA that's, you know, that accounts for a lot of it, too. So, um, and, and I t we just need to tell that story and put the, the tax number in. Well, one, hope it gets a little better, uh, but then put it in context, because I, I think it's a, I think it's a very solid budget, um, and I think it's a budget that Montpelier should support, but I, I do, you know, people pay attention to numbers and, um, yeah, I'm looking at inflation and these per people spending numbers because I just crunched those numbers briefly yesterday. And from FY15 to FY21, they're pretty much exactly even. Um, so, and that is with two years of projections based on the state's consensus revenue forecast yeah, for what so inflation is going to be paired with what actual inflation was. So, yeah, so, so I think we can tell a good story that you know, the increase, the increase in the tax rate is not due to a, a year of spending that's out of line with what we've been spending. And we heard from a lot of community members about desires and that they have for our schools that we're not providing for. Um, I'm yeah. thinking of the theater group in particular. Yeah, Bridget. We've also, you know, this, Andrew, it's really helpful, Andrew and Grant, this story over a period of time, and I would just add to it that in these last few years, we have also been catching up on a lot of deferred maintenance. Mm -hmm. So we've not only yes. been yeah. educating our students and meeting their needs, as we've been fixing these buildings that had suffered for a long time, and that investment will continue to pay off <coughs> for a long time. You did pass big bond, however. Yeah, but that's, in, but that's, that's included in the tax rate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the numbers in front of me, but that's going down over time from here on out, is it not? All the construction bonds do go down a little bit each year as the interest goes down each year, and then of course you get the big drop whenever one gets paid off. Right. Um, yeah, they go down a little bit. Our, our retirement bond is, is kind of going up a little bit as that goes down, though, so it's pretty stable. I'd say it's overall it's a little bit of a decrease, but not dramatic. So any thoughts or just mm -hmm. hold tight and plug in the equalizer and we'll give it to you and we'll talk again next week? Yeah, I'll do that. Please. Sounds fair. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Grant. We appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And thanks, Andrew, for additional number. I'm sorry. <laughs> number crunching. Yes, and thanks also to Libby and Grant for getting some tenure <coughs> yes, thank you. numbers um, in quick order. But I know you have other things to do but I, I do think I do think this is helpful in terms of telling a story because uh, this is this is the first time in you know three to four years as Andrew pointed out that we've, we've brought a, a budget to the public that's really asked for much in terms of, of tax increase and I do like this slide a lot if we can explain it which maybe somebody else might be able to do better than me but I mean this is Montpelier's line for tax rate without the CLA, which we can't do anything about the CLA. We have no control over that. And it's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty flat. Mm -hmm. Yes, it goes up, but that's whenever you factor in the CLA, which you can't do anything about. So, and this is for both communities as we exist in as a unified district. So, that's helpful. All right, thank you very much. Great. Thank Thanks, for Thanks for all you do. So we are like well ahead of schedule, um, awesome. which is good news for all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think next we have executive session and contract negotiations. We also want to discuss um, a personnel matter. Yeah, pers personnel matters because I don't think uh, administration contracts fall into. 
Yeah, you want to give us an update on yeah. renewals on those too. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a special um, ask to have Grant come into executive session? Or so I've asked him to come in. We, we can, can invite we can anybody, anybody, anybody we want. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we make a motion to enter and then we can invite anybody else. Okay. So. Thank so we should invite yeah. Mara too. <laughs> That's his job. <laughs> He's read his Robert's rules. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he and Robert are best friends. <laughs> uh, um, I move to find that discussing contact negotiations in the public setting would put the district at a substantial disadvantage. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, we have a motion to go to executive session. To discuss. For the purpose of discussing the contract and personal, and personal, personal matter. Yeah. With an invitation to business manager Grant Geisler. And Mara Edwards. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.